Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here. All right, quick breakdown on the timeline of RED cameras. Every year or so, they come out with an upgrade and they seem to swap back and forth between a new body and then a new sensor inside. So new body, new sensor inside, new body, new sensor. So the latest from the bleeding edge of high-end cine cameras is RED's new helium sensor. You may have heard about it. I may have teased it in a previous video, but this is a Super 35 8K sensor. So right off the bat, it's super overkill for a YouTube, but I've been shooting red for a while and this stuff gets me excited. So the helium sensor will come in two different red bodies. In the weapon, which I've showed you, did a whole video on it, check it out, and the Epic W. The Epic W is a brand new addition to red's lineup. So yes, this is the first time you're seeing it anywhere. This is your exclusive first look. And for those who have seen my weapon video, it'll look very familiar. It sits pretty comfortably between the lower end Raven and Scarlet W and the highest end weapon, but still has most of the benefits of a helium weapon just at a bit of a lower price. So you still get the modular system that's such a big part of the RED experience. You still get compatibility with every single one of the accessories that works with the weapon and any other RED. And you're getting the exact same helium sensor that's in any other helium camera. So the 8K resolution, the awesome dynamic range, the RED code raw, and RED's incredible color science, but in a different body. And like I said in the weapon video, the cameras at this level are like computers attached to sensors at this point. So the different body of the Epic W actually has different internals, different processing power. It's a different computer. And so that's where it's different from the weapon. So this Epic W maxes out at 30 frames per second at 8K, while the weapon will go up to 75 frames per second. And it's not quite able to shoot at the lowest compression ratios the way that weapon can. And the body, the body is actually made of this aluminum alloy. So it's all metal all around, as you can see, where the weapon is made of carbon fiber. So the weight is actually different. And that's a big draw for a lot of people. And if you're wondering what footage from the new helium sensor will look like, well, to start off, you're looking at it. I'm actually shooting this video on a freshly upgraded helium weapon. So the maxed out carbon fiber beast I've showed you guys in previous videos is now rocking the new 8K sensor. And so far, it is awesome. Now, if you're wondering why you can't tell the difference right away from previous videos, it's because number one, this is YouTube. Every clip from these cameras looks 10 times better on your computer before it's uploaded and compressed for streaming on the internet. That's true with any camera. And number two, this is published in 4K, not 8K. What's funny is the sensor in these cameras are so new that most video editing programs don't even support 8K edits and exports. Final Cut Pro is not really fully ready for it yet. Adobe has a beta of Premiere just to handle the footage from this camera. And YouTube itself doesn't even let you publish 8K for the most part. 4K is the maximum resolution for an H.264 video file. So the footage you're seeing was shot in 6K. Turns out Final Cut Pro can handle that. And all edited and exported into a 4K video file. So you're watching the 4K final result. If that, I mean, most people don't watch in 4K anyway, so you can only kind of get the full benefits on your end to this point. But in theory, there are a couple more benefits to Helium that I'll notice as I start shooting with it more. The biggest one besides just resolution is the much better performance in low light. And that's always been the thing about these RED cameras is they're really not made for low light. I mean, they'll perform well as far as cinema and TV standards, but if you're looking to constantly be shooting in really dark environments, then you can do better. Helium is supposed to dramatically improve that, which you wouldn't think with the pixels actually being so much smaller. But hey, the video you're watching now is not super well lit but it's mostly kind of spotlights in a storefront and it turned out pretty good. And I'm already comfortable with much higher ISO footage like 2000 and 4000 and higher where I wasn't with older red. So that's a good sign. And there's also likely the updated color science, still the incredible dynamic range. So yeah, I'm psyched to get out and start shooting the world and the tech in it on Helium in 8K. I probably won't publish an 8K for a long while. I mean, no one has an 8K display right now, let alone a 4K display, but we can shoot 8K now for the same reason that people shot 4K a couple years ago to publish in 1080p, for the extra sharpness, for the ability to crop and zoom without losing detail, for more data points for stuff like motion tracking, graphics, stabilization, things like that, geeky stuff, you don't have to worry about that for the most part. Only thing you have to worry about is that these new sensors will continue helping in the quest to shoot the most realistic looking videos possible to help you choose what tech to buy. And I think we can all appreciate that. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.